So I just bought this new guitar, so I thought I'd share it with all of the uh, YouTube subscribers and website subscribers. So here it is. It's a 2018 Douglas Scott classical guitar, and uh, Douglas is located up in Ladysmith, British Columbia, so on Vancouver Island. And uh, he's a great builder. I've tried out many of his instruments before, so I'm, I already knew that I would really um, enjoy his instruments. And uh, so you probably noticed that I've been playing on that Cordoba for a few months, um, but that's because I was just waiting for this one to be completed. And so here it is. And so I'll just tell you a little bit about um, the guitar, why I ordered it, some of the specs and things like that. And then I'll take the camera off the tripod and do some close up so you can really see some of the nice workmanship and detail of the guitar. And then I'll just play a few kind of like little excerpts of pieces um, just here in the room here. So um, this guitar is a smaller scale guitar, so the string length is reduced, so the whole instrument is a little bit smaller. It's a 632 millimeter. The average or normal scale length for a guitar would be 650. So it's 632, and it has a smaller body. So I was trying out and demoing a number of guitars that were um, smaller bodied guitars and, and smaller scale guitars and I just love the feel so much and I'm pretty short Don't you know remember so I, I'm short I have small hands um, So I'm playing on a smaller instrument like this uh, just feels really really great I was also really interested in, in what the smaller body does to the sound as well because I think it focuses the sound quite a bit But it does change it a little bit. So it's a 630 millimeter instrument Western red cedar top um, Indian rosewood back and sides. I'll do a close up later, but it's the general idea. Um, ebony fingerboard, Spanish cedar neck, um, Goto tuners, which I really, really like. And I've had Sloan's before, the frictionless Sloan's, but I think these are even smoother. They're just really great. And they're not that crazy expensive or anything like that. Um, a couple of other things, um, the string spacing at the nut is 42 millimeters, the saddle um, 59 millimeters, so that's just a little bit smaller than usual, but m like almost neg negligible um, or not noticeable at all. Um, slightly thinner neck, but I mean every luthier builds their necks a little bit different in profile, so this one's um, a little bit maybe just a hair thinner than Douglas's um, normal Next, but nevertheless, feels really, really great. I like the slightly reduced string space spacing. Um, it has an elevated fingerboard, as you can see. So the body of the guitar or the top of the guitar slopes down, and that just gives you better access to the upper frets. And I've had this on all my um, all my recent instruments, and I'm, I'm really happy with that. I would never go back to not having a raised fingerboard. Um, also a nice sound portal here, as you can see with the magnetic cover. Nice strong magnets on this one. I also like how he really made the cover look exactly like the guitar, so it's not that noticeable, really. Um, so a couple of things uh, just about the instrument. Um, like I said, um, I wanted a smaller instrument, um, as I am quite short, and, um, and a smaller body as well. I always felt like a big body instrument is always raising my shoulders up and also pushing my arm out this way so I really feel like with the smaller one I can really just drop my arm into this and it feels really great and then the first fret is right here which really allows me nice curvature just even this a little bit further out here just makes me feel like I have to extend my wrist but with the smaller scale um, just not as much um, I don't think smaller scale instruments make will make me a better player or anything like that. It won't improve anyone's playing, but it might make it just a little bit more comfortable in general. Um, even, even the stretches, like, I don't think this, any stretches are more or less possible, but they just feel slightly more comfortable. So I don't think my stretches increased with a smaller instrument, but it, it just feels maybe a bit more comfortable. Um, I also love the armrest. Um, armrests are really great. They just feel so smooth. Um, usually I use like something on my arm to stop the friction, but actually with an armrest you don't even really need it. I'll do it anyway. So in terms of the sound, um, Douglas's guitars have so much pop. Um, they're very, very responsive. So that's one of the reasons I ordered his guitars, is that um, I've played lots of them before and like um, someone who I play with uh, very often, Michael Diaz, he has a Douglas Scott, and I've always just loved how much the notes just pop out. 
it's just super responsive to the touch. Um, but it's it's his own design, but it is a fan brace guitar. But I've always been so impressed with the volume. The volume of Doug's guitars are spectacular. Um, and they're very responsive, kind of just like a double top, except they don't have that mid-range, kind of um, big mid-range tone. So they have a more focused projection, or that's how I perceive the sound. There's no good way to talk about these things, but I perceive it as a more focused projection and a real balanced sound. So you don't always get that big Spanishy sound, but it's, it's very focused. And I think with the smaller body guitar, it's even more focused and balanced. And that projection is very, very focused. So it's not a big... And, um, and an elegant sound too. It's very clean sounding. Um, keep in mind that um, the microphones are right there. This is a very reflective room. So you might not get a really good sense of what the guitar sounds like, but nevertheless, um, um, I just wanted to try it out anyway. So a uh, very elegant sound, very responsive, lots of pop, lots of clarity between the strings. And so those are the qualities that I really wanted. And that's exactly what I got when I ordered the instrument. And um, his attention to detail is just wonderful. Excellent finishing. Like You can't see any flaws with the French polishing. So very, very impressive workmanship. I think, I, I don't know Doug with that well, but um, uh, I think he's kind of a perfectionist in, in many ways, so very ultra clean workmanship. The other cool thing about Douglas is that he's actually a really great guitarist himself. Um, so I think when he built, when he started building guitars and making his design, um, he was very well informed by his own playing because, um, like I said, he, he, he plays very well himself. So let me take the um, the camera off of the tripod and I'll just do some close-ups of the instrument. So here's the instrument up close and uh, it's in my new Hiscox case as well which I'll do a full review of at a different time. Let's do a close-up of the label. And the, ro the rosette. Take a look at the 12-hole bridge here. Here's the armrest. Cedar top. It's very reflective in here, so here I am. Here's the raised fingerboard. The Indian rosewood side. Here's the sound port. Stays on with magnets. The headstock. Now the French polish on this guitar is so shiny that it's kind of impossible to get a shot of the back without um, a lot of reflection in it. But um, I'll just kind of tilt it in a variety of ways here. And hopefully that gives you some of an idea of what it looks like. It has this cool like cross grain thing on it, which I've never seen with 
um, Indian rosewood before, but it's like a cool stripey horizontal stripes that go in opposite direction. As you can see, there's lots of glare, but that should give you a pretty good idea of what the instrument looks like. So I'll play you a few excerpts on, on this guitar. A um, couple things to keep in mind. Um, the strings on here are Daddario Titanium um, trebles, so um, they're a little bit brighter than they, they not normally would be. Um, I actually quite like them, but they are, are a little bit on the brighter side, so maybe just the normal clear nylon would be a bit smoother and more legato. Also, this is a small reflective room, and the microphones are just like two feet away from me, so you know, um, you can't get that clear of an, or that accurate of a of a sound. Um, it's a little bit on the bright and harsh side in here. In a concert hall, it'd be much warmer and much more much more sustained, of course, just from the room um, rever reverb. So just keep those things in mind. But nevertheless, um, I'll give you some ideas as to what it might sound like, and I'll just talk about also just about uh, how it feels to play on this instrument. So, like I was saying before, it has lots of pop and and a really responsive guitar allows you to really bring out a melody. So for example, um, so it's really easy to that note to come out with using very little effort and that's what a high quality guitar does it just allows you to more easily accomplish the music it's making it a better tool right nice balance of sound and you can really bring out a melody very easily. Um, I'll play some Kellner as well. Do an excerpt from another piece from um, this Jacques Two piece. Thank you. 
Oops. Do that again. That one's not quite ready yet, but gives you an idea of uh, um, some of the upper register um, areas and some more like um, sustained kind of um, harmonic ideas on the instrument. Like I said, I, I love how balanced and focused and clear it is, has great volume, great projection. And you know, like anyone that says like a smaller body instrument can't be loud, um, I really have to disagree, especially in this case. Um, I think it's, it's, it's very loud and very focused sound. I'm super happy with it, um, but I already kind of knew that when I was ordering it, that I've seen enough of his guitars, and he's a very consistent builder, so they've all been really great. And so here it is, yeah, the new one. So this will be my main instrument for um, hopefully a very long time.